Hello, Sam Moser here. This is the fourth video in the series I'm doing on the truck bed camper that I've been building. And in this one, I'm going to cover the interior. So the main parts of that are going to be the insulation, the wall paneling, the simple 12 volt electrical system, and some other odds and ends. Let's get into it. Before I get into the build details, uh, I wanted to get a good shot that shows the size of the interior with a person sitting in here, because I don't think I've shown that in any of the other videos. So as you can see, kind of sitting in the middle point here, it's still plenty of room to sit up, move around. Now with two people in here, it's really not too cramped, and I think the size works out pretty well. What we've done when we've gone camping is we've put foam pads down on the floor here, and then thrown our blankets and sleeping bags on top of that. And then we have to put some gear in here and the rest under it or in the car and it's been working out really well. Now to the construction. The frame of the camper was made from 3 quarter inch plywood. In between the frame members I added 3 quarter inch rigid foam insulation. This type of insulation is very easy to cut. You just need to score a line in it using a straight edge and a razor. Then you can snap it along the, that line. I didn't use any adhesive to hold the panels in place. I tried to cut most of them to fit snugly, and once the wall paneling got put in place, there was no room for them to move. We were sleeping in the camper out in West Texas about a week ago, and at night the temperatures were dropping into the 30s. And I thought the insulation did an effective job at trapping our body heat inside of here. You know, by no means is this thing thoroughly insulated. Um, the upper sections of the wall have no insulation at all. But by morning, when you opened the door, it was noticeably warmer in here than outside. After the insulation was in place, I could attach the wall paneling. This is the material I used. It's about 1 8 inch thick, and it's mostly MDF with a thin veneer on top. I cut a piece to the size and shape of each wall and attached it to the frame with screws. The insulation is a hair thicker than the frame, so the wall paneling has a slight wave to it, but I'm okay with this. I wanted a 12 volt electrical system for the camper so that I could run a fan and some lights, but I wanted to keep it pretty simple. So what I did was I found this little power pack, and it has lithium ion batteries inside and can store 150 watt hours of power, so decent for the size. On this side it has uh, barrel jack connectors that are 12 volt outputs, and then on this side it has USBs uh, for charging other electronics directly from it. It also has um, an inverter and one 10 volt plugs, but it's not a pure sine wave inverter, so I wouldn't really trust plugging many things into that. Uh, for charging it, it's pretty flexible as well. You can charge it from a normal outlet uh, with an AC adapter, or it came with a uh, 12 volt plug that plugs right into your car, so you can charge it in there while you're driving. And it also came with a cable to hook it up to a solar panel, and it does have a solar charge controller inside. Um, so you can do that as well, although I haven't tried that yet. Since this thing combines everything for maintaining the battery, I was able to keep the rest of the system pretty simple. Here's a schematic of the rest of the system. Basically, there are two lines going out from the power pack, one for the lights and one for the fan. I added a fuse to each to protect the battery pack in case anything ever shorted. Each line then goes through a PWM dimmer, but I had a small issue with these which I'll explain here shortly. I ended up only putting one LED strip in, but you can add more in parallel easily. I'll put links to some of these items in the video description. To make things easier when constructing this, I put the insulation, wiring, and wall paneling in the roof before assembling the upper and lower sections of the camper. This made it easier as I didn't have to fight gravity with the insulation and wiring. It's also difficult to reach all the screws that hold the paneling in place once everything is assembled together. Thank you. 
Lifting the upper section onto the lower section of the camper took two people and a little coordination, but we made it work. Let's take a look at the inside once everything was installed. Okay, so on the ceiling here is my LED light bar, and that can be turned on through this dimmer here. Uh, there's another dimmer that was going to be for the fan, and then I built this little box just to hide some of the wiring. Up here we have the fan, which you can crank the lid open and closed, and then turn it on. It's three speeds although low is actually moves quite a bit of air. With uh, a window or two open and the fan going, you get really good airflow through the camper actually. So about these dimmers. I bought these dimmers online and I was gonna use one for the LED and one for the fan. And they're 12 to 24 volts, 30 amps, so they fit within the specs for both the fan and the lights. Uh, the issue I've had with them is the switching frequency of them to PWM dimmer is actually within the audible range and they create a pretty annoying um, kind of buzzing hum, very high pitched noise when you're using them. So I unplugged it from the fan because it wasn't worth it. Uh, I left it in because I might replace it with a different dimmer in the future. And I left the one on the LED bar because at full power you don't hear any noise and at just a very, very light dim, you don't really hear anything, which is useful for at night if you want just a little bit of light on. Um, but if you do order any kind of inexpensive dimmers, that's something you need to look out for. In the floor at the back of the camper, I have these two in-floor storage areas. And on the one in the left here is where I've been keeping the battery pack. So if you lift this panel out, you can see down there is the, the rest of the wiring. It's not very neat and the 12 volt battery pack. I will say though, once you have your sleeping pads and your blankets and other gear in here, it's not very convenient to access these little drop-in storage areas. One more thing I wanted to show was some straps that I added to the door. I wanted to protect the piano hinge from ever getting damaged or pulling at the screws if the wind were to catch the door and really swing it out hard. So I put a little piece of nylon webbing here and I just attached it with a screw and a washer and that seems to work pretty well to not let the, the door swing all the way to where it puts tension on the hinge. That's about everything I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you found this helpful. If you liked the video and you want to see more like this, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. See you later.